Hey everyone, it's that time. It is I, and today, uh, again, we're catching up on some of these wide release films that were out, and this one is The Girl on the Train. You saw a lot of trailers for it, brought to us by Tate Taylor, who directed The Help, and here we get the story of Rachel, who rides the train every day, and uh, she's an alcoholic, and she's just been recently divorced, lives with her friend, but she always watches the houses in the neighborhood that she passes, because she used to live there, and she, uh, you know, notices this one family that she's kind of fixated on. Well, one day she gets off the train and starts following her and that girl that she's kind of uh, focused on goes uh, missing. And soon she's pro suspect number one and she's dealing not only with that but with her ex-husband, her husband who, uh, his husband's wife who he left her for and a whole lot of other drama going on in The Girl on the Train. Uh, Emily Blunt makes the most of this script I did enjoy her Rachel character, the the alcoholic, uh, you know, dealing with alcoholism and having a rough time dealing with the divorce as well, and the fact her husband left her for their, uh, you know, for another woman. And I, I enjoyed her performance, and she made the most of it. But the problem is, most of this uh, script and the acting in this is just overdone. I I felt it felt too hard, like it was trying to be Gone Girl so much as far as tone and feel and at the same time going look at us look at how uh, we're being give us an Oscar give us an Oscar that I mean it felt like it was pushing that envelope too far uh, you know Haley Bennett's in here the Megan character I enjoyed the sub story that we find you know with her background I enjoyed that actually more than the main storyline that they had going on here I, I thought that was more interesting uh, Anna played by Rebecca Ferguson you know she her character and she does all right. She doesn't get a huge amount of screen time in here. The thing is, too, it was trying to be creative and throw you off on who is the real bad guy and what actually happened to the girl. But you could see it coming a mile away if you've watched any uh, thriller like this. You know what's coming. It wasn't a surprise at all. And I think it's because of the translation from word to picture. Now, I haven't read the book, but I imagine they keep things a little bit more of an enigma, a little more red herrings at you and who, uh, you know, is the actual bad guy and the, the, you know, problems with the husband and why they got divorced and what type of guy he really is and the whole nine yards. I, I'm sure it's more of an enigma, but in the movie, it's pretty blatant and evident. Uh, they try try to throw some curveballs at you but you, you don't really buy into it on the whole girl on the tr the girl on the train i think is trying way too hard i don't think it had to try as hard i think they didn't give the audience possibly enough uh you know uh, enough credit to try to figure things out you know uh, you know as the film goes along and so they felt like they had to put more of these cues than they needed and i just it, it's just kind of there uh you know it had a potential to be more and they try to make the most of it but in the end the script was just uh, not there and neither was the direction for me so the girl on the train only gets two and a half stubs for me uh, I just couldn't get into it as much as I'd hope I do like these uh, actors and actresses in this film it just was uh, not all that it was cracked up to be so if you've seen the girl on the train please leave your comments down below love to hear your thoughts on this film make sure you subscribe if you haven't already I appreciate all of you out there. Thank you for visiting my sliver of the internet, and until next time, keep that ticket stub.